Hi everyone, welcome to LC Math. Today we'll be talking about some more modern proofs of the infinitude of the prime numbers. By modern, I mean not thousands of years old, like the Euclid proof, but only hundreds of years old, mostly due to Euler. It all starts with the Riemann zeta function. It's defined as zeta of a variable s is the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the s, which you can show by writing this as an Euler product, which we're not going to do here, though it's done in many other YouTube videos, uh, by using the sieve property of the prime numbers. As the sum, sorry, the product of all p and element of the primes, recall we use double struck p for the set of primes, just like last video, of 1 over 1 minus 1 over p to the s. Very easily proven. Uh, maybe I'll go into it sometime, but you can find it everywhere on YouTube. <coughs> Excuse me. So, what we want to do is a very physicist thing. If a physicist had to prove that there were infinitely many primes, he would probably do what we're going to do now. So he would first let s be equal to 1. If we do this, then we have zeta of 1 is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, which we recognize as the harmonic series. And if we put in 1 for s on the other side here, product of all the primes of 1 over 1 minus 1 over p, which upon multiplying top and bottom by p is the product of p of p minus 1 on the bottom. Now let's go ahead and plug in some numbers just for explicit example here. Left hand side we have 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 quarter, etc. all the way to infinity. On the right hand side, we have a prime on top divided by the prime minus one. So let's go ahead and write that. First prime is two, it's two over one. Next prime is three, three over two. Next one is five over four, and then seven over six, and then not nine, 11 over 10, and 13 over 12, not 15. 17 over 16, and we continue this on indefinitely. So we see we have the product of the primes on top, and then we have uh, multiples of two on the bottom. So we're going to assume by way of contradiction, again, that, <coughs> excuse me, a set of primes is finite. This tells us that the right-hand side product here has to have finitely many terms, and therefore it converges. So we have this, uh, this product here converges, but if the right-hand side of an expression converges, the left-hand side of an expression must also converge. So this tells us that the harmonic series converges which we know is definitely a contradiction since the harmonic series diverges. So I think this is a pretty cool way to show that we have infinitely many primes. All you have to do is plug s equals 1 into the Riemann zeta function, express it as a product, and you're good to go. And if you were a physicist and you also wanted to show that the harmonic series diverges, you'll probably do this. You'd say the harmonic series diverges since by the integral test, integral from 1 to infinity of dx over x is just the natural log of x evaluated at infinity and 1, which is log of infinity minus... Sorry, that looks like an 8, not log of 8, minus, uh, minus log of 1, which is 0, of course, which is infinity. 
There are, of course, other ways to prove that the harmonic series diverges, in particular if you were a mathematician. You could also use this, but you might want to use something that uses less machinery. And that's the theme of this proof as well. A mathematician would not necessarily be satisfied with this proof, since it uses the machinery of the Riemann zeta function in the Euler product, which are very complicated mathematical objects, tell you something very simple about the primes, which are the, one of the simplest mathematical, ma mathematical objects, and definitely the simplest object in number theory. So when Euler developed this, mathematicians wanted him to derive the same conclusion without explicitly using the zeta function. And you can do this. Definitely impossible for you to do this. You just need some additional, more fundamental tools. In particular, all you need to obtain the same conclusion is the geometric series formula and the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which we are going to state now. First, geometric series. So we're going to be using the following. Uh, geometric series formula sum from k equals zero to infinity of, um, sorry, x to the k. x to the k is equal to one over one minus x for absolute value of x less than one. You know this from high school, no problem. We're going to need a more advanced form of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic than we used the previous video. <coughs> Excuse me. So, fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Which we call the FTA, <coughs> excuse me, for this video. In this video, um, it's going to be stated as follows. So every integer has a unique prime factorization. And the form that we need in particular written out in symbols is as follows. For integer n, we're going to decompose it into a product of primes indexed by i raised to some alpha power. And note, we can actually let i go to infinity since p to the zero is one for any p. So we can write this as, you know, p one to some power one, p2 to some other power, p3, some other power, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just an example of this, of what we're doing here. So if we looked at, uh, well, let's, yeah. So we had, uh, let's talk about 40. So 40 we know as eight times five, right? We can also decompose eight into two times three, two cubed times five. This is its prime factorization, its unique prime factorization. And we can also add a bunch of terms that are one as well if we wanted to. So there'd be seven to the zero, there'd be 11 to the zero, and you know, we skipped nine, we're gonna add 13, skip 15, but not 17. This continues on forever. So this is what enables us to write it as an infinite product it's going to be necessary in this application, but for most purposes, you don't need it to be infinite. But we do here. So let's go ahead and write the, the FTA here. We have n is the product of all the primes to some power. Excellent. Now we can begin Euler's proof. We are going to do that by considering the following expression. Exactly what was on the right hand side. We have the product as P goes through all the primes, a one minus one over P, which we can use as, um, we're gonna use this formula here since one over p is gonna be less than one for all p, keep the product here. Oh, 
I started started leaving out the P, capital P, just for consistency. Then we have one over P to the kth power, but now we have to put a sum. Right, so I just simplified the geometric series formula here. And now we have a product of sum. We're just going to keep the sum where it is. We're going to introduce new variables, uh, k, l, m, and n, and so forth, for the summation variables. And we're going to let p loop through all the primes at the same time. So we're going to start with the first prime, which is 2, of course. Sum k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the k, and we have sum from l equals 0 to infinity 1 over the next prime, which is 3 to the l. We have sum from m equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 5 to the m. Next prime, we need another variable, n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 7 to the n. And the idea is to continue this indefinitely as we multiply all sums of primes together. We are going to combine this to one summation indexed by the number of variables we need. We're also going to multiply everything together because we can do that. Because we're physicists, we don't care about absolute convergence or any of that. K, L, M, N, and so on and so forth. Loop from zero to infinity. We have one over two to the K, three to the L, five M, seven N, etc. But wait, this looks awfully similar to what we knew about from the fundamental theorem of arithmetic up here. We can write any integer as the infinite product of all the primes. That is actually what we have here. This is nothing but sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, which we recognize as the harmonic series. So now we're done. We can just appeal to the uh, previous proof. By the previous zeta function proof, we have that uh, cardinality of the primes is in fact infinite because we have same situation here, harmonic series equal to the product of the primes in some way, some complicated way. Left hand side and right side have to either converge or diverge together. That's what we have here. So you see, the main message of what we did here is we can arrive at Euler's conclusion about the harmonic series and the product of the primes without invoking the zeta function, making the mathematicians happier. Because all we've used is the geometric series formula and the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which are definitely fair game to prove simple things about the primes, like how many primes are there? And for this next proof, it's a bit more involved. It's a bit more modern. I'm not really sure who the author of this prime is. If you look on Wikipedia page for Euler's theorem, Oh, sorry, I'm getting all these proofs from uh, Euclid's theorem. So yeah, I'm getting all these proofs from the Wikipedia page, Euclid's theorem. Feel free to look them up to your, yourself if, if, if you want to find a few more. Um, the ones that I showed you, I pretty much copied straight from there, but filled in the steps. A little bit and simplified the notation and showed you where they came from. This next proof is totally off the walls. There's a lot of missing steps that I had to fill in and Wikipedia says it could be original research. So we'll see how it goes. So just to set you up for what to expect, instead of using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic or the zeta functions, we're actually going to use pi we're going to be showing in this next proof that pi is irrational actually tells us that we have infinitely many primes, which is pretty cool. We have to set up a bit of machinery to do it. There's a lot more machinery, so the mathematicians might not like this one as much, but 
They would also like it though because it shows that there's another concept that is equivalent to there being infinitely many primes. So it's a bit of jack of all trades for this next one. <laughs>